Hello there, I'm Dr. Curtis Finch, Superintendent of Deer Valley Unified School District. Welcome to a brand new episode of the award-winning Soup Scoop podcast. There are many paths to a career path, and DVUSD features 22 career areas for high school students to explore in our career and technical education classrooms, better known as CTE. And the education isn't confined to a classroom. CTE studies often take place outside of the classroom, in hands-on role-playing activities or in the field the student is studying. DVSD students have won numerous awards in CTE competitions recently, including marketing, healthcare, and food service management. Now we're proud to promote cybersecurity classes and a new construction industries path. On this episode, you hear from the students, teachers, advisors, and professionals on how CTE can make a positive impact on a student's life whether that student goes to college after high school or directly into the trades. Let's start with the students. As I was recently talking with several students of Miss Sini Thomas's class at Sandra Day O'Connor High School. Miss Thomas is the CTE instructor for AP Computer Science Principles, AP CSA, and Cybersecurity Networking. And her students are already reaping the benefits of their CTE education. My name is Sini Thomas and I am the CTE Computer Science teacher at San Diego Corner High School. I teach AP Computer Science Principles, AP Computer Science A, and AP Cyber 1 Advanced. And Cyber 2 would be like one more program that we're going to start um, the next school year. Um, we have like really good uh, success stories with my kids, and then I have some students who have moved on to taking internship roles in corporate companies. The best part of the program is once students finish their second year advanced software group, that's the program. So once they finish that, then they can actually do the industry certification and then they can go on to applying for jobs in the local companies out here, especially the software companies. Nice. So a lot of fun stuff happens in this O'Connor Eagle classroom. Maybe uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how the impact of uh, this class and this this track on your uh, your journey. All right, hi, my name is Dilov Saravan. I'm a junior at Santa Connor High School. This is my second year of computer science. I'm in the computer science advanced class in which we're learning Java. My Thomas is Ms. Tom. I mean, my teacher is Ms. Thomas. Just introduced herself, and I would say that my favorite part of the program is definitely the teacher, Ms. Thomas, because. Most teachers are more focused on just book memorization when it comes to teaching in general, but Ms. Thomas focuses more on invoking creativity, enhancing our critical thinking skills, which I think is really essential for the computer science program in general, because it's more of being creative and knowing how to use the code instead of just memorization of lines, which won't really help much. And as of now, I'm just trying to refine my coding skills. I'm not sure I'm more open to many options for the future. And I'm really happy your school has a cybersecurity program now because I'm more interested in pursuing that next year. So that's what I'm most looking forward to for this school year. And yeah, so now I'm the president of the coding club at our school. And one big thing for me is that, like one regret I had is that I didn't do computer science in my freshman year. And it was after I joined sophomore year, after I had some friends tell me how great the class is, how great the teacher is, I started liking the class a lot, and I wanted to use that community, build the community bigger, and start the coding club so I could show the students talents to like outside schools as well, get them more involved in competitions, and get everyone closer together to make a big community, a bigger community. It sounds like it's uh, blooming here at O'Connor. Talk to me, introduce yourself, tell me about the impact of this class on you. All right, so um, my name is Ayush Kumar, and um, I'm a sophomore this year, and I'm also in the Computer Science Advance, so I took Computer Science Principles in my freshman year. So this is my consecutive second year, and I've noticed that not only does this class build just programming skills that will obviously set you up if you want to go in the path of computer science, but it also builds effective communication skills and critical thinking, which is useful for any job uh, to this day, right? And... For computer programming wise, um, we start off on basic foundations and those foundations can lead you to learn any programming language that you want. Like as of right now, I'm learning uh, React.js along, along with Next.js 
and both of them require the foundations that I've learned in my CSP class and I'm learning in object-oriented programming right now. And the, uh, how about you? Can you introduce yourself and then uh, talk a little bit about your path here? Mm-hmm. My name is Jack Franson. I am a junior and I am in the third year of computer science cybersecurity where we work with networking and cybersecurity. And uh, we've learned a lot. It's like a college course introduction and we've been learning a lot about um, how to like uh, interface with different things the the process of doing it doing that and um, a lot of like how to like protect your data and some other stuff and we're gonna move into mm-hmm. yeah we're gonna like configuring networks so that um, like they run basically well, obviously, our computers run our lives. That's yeah. pretty obvious. Um, when the, when we don't have electricity, we might as well send everybody home. <laughs> so uh, computers are big time important in our system. Obviously, protection of data, stuff like that. Um, you guys are the future for this. Talk, to Introduce yourself and talk about a little bit more about um, this class and maybe uh, the impact of, of computer programming and, uh, on you. Um, my name is Carter Hancock. I know for this that I had no idea what anything Computers, like how it worked. I couldn't work a TV remote going into my first year of this class. I'm currently a junior and I'm in my third year. I'm currently in cybersecurity one. I really walked into this class freshman year, uh, comp sci principles, going, it's an AP class. Sounds fun. I want to do it. And I was more doing it for the AP credit. I was choosing it. And then that's what I came in, like walking into it. That was it. And then I really fell into in love with just coding in general, as well as the teacher is amazing and the space and who you're working with, all just amazing people, as well as I love the problem solving portion of it. Just all of that going through and going, why is this not working? Why am I getting this bug, et cetera, et cetera. You're up next. Talk a little bit about, introduce yourself and talk about uh, the impact of cybersecurity class on you. My name is James and I am a sophomore at Sandra Day O'Connor High School. I am currently taking uh, cybersecurity and networking one, and it's it's a fantastic class. Um, last year, I did the computer science principles, and it was a blast. I I I know a little bit of programming beforehand, but it it was very basic. And after that year, I just I I can learn so much more even on my own, and I really enjoy it. This class. Um, Networking is now giving me the fundamentals to push that further um, because we're learning everything from how to configure and structure a network to uh, how to interact with computers on a very low level through stuff like command line. And it's really giving me the, the foundation to take this to a job or however far I need to take it. Is anybody working as an internship in an actual company today? The local companies, especially Honeywell. Okay. And then we have um, somebody from TSMC who's going to come and speak to my students. And some most people from think Google like, you know, Microsoft. Uh, there is somebody who I know, so she's going to come and talk to my students too. Yeah, we know so. uh, the Taiwanese Semiconductor Manufacturing yes. Company is the world's largest chip machine. They're Intel's bigger brother, and they are, are in the smack dab center of our district. Will have a major impact on our system, and you will be a valued commodity for sure. It sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like the class is teaching you how to learn, and then when you can, so then the sky's the limit. Rather than just worry about page 47, if I teach you how to go learn yourself. You can may do many things with this concept. Am I on the right path? Okay. Talk to me a little bit about um, where you see uh, this concept going forward, because obviously artificial intelligence is a major player going forward. Um, how how is the human element still going to be valuable? Anybody? So I, um, a lot of people like saying like AI is going to replace replace programmers. I strongly disagree. I think that rather than AI replacing programmers, stuff like ChatGPT, I think that it is going to be an invaluable tool that every programmer will have to learn how to use. 
Otherwise, they'll fall behind because I have learned a lot of what I know about programming and, and stuff like that by saying, hey, ChatGPT, I'm having XYZ problem with my code. How, how should I work that out? Do you have like some, some basic code to explain like what's going on? And it's, it's really helped me really push what I know about programming um, even further because I'm, I'm not really copying and pasting the code. I'm instead taking it and understanding how it works and implementing it in my own. So it's kind of a, a teacher for you, a tool. A tool. Yes. Any thoughts? Um, yeah, so it's on the same line. I obviously dis disagree that AI will take over completely because I personally feel like this is just the world evolving, like all over again. Like we went from having like uh, gas-based cars to electric cars, and obviously the car man manufacturing companies have still learned how to make electric-based cars to keep up with the times. So just like every other like employee, we're, we will all as software developers have to learn how AI works in order to compete in a world with AI. And obviously I don't feel like AI will replace us completely because there are certain tasks that AI simply just cannot do. Like for example, attending meetings or holding like tasks and stuff like that, right? We can't just fully have an entire company relying on just mere AI, right? And obviously AI is still uh, expanding and it's not perfect and we obviously need more people to learn AI machine learning and continue the development of AI in the near future. Obviously your class is very advanced and it has a lot of opportunities for students. Um, where where do you see yourself, anyone from uh, three years from now, um, what, what what do you see as an extension of this class? Anybody see this field in their life? Yeah, definitely, especially with the fact that um, three years I'll probably be in college for this or maybe I'll be in engineering or something like this. But not only does this help us with you know basic problem solving, making us think, uh, which is useful for everything, but also being able to apply this to, like I currently know, both Java and JavaScript, HTML, C CSS, that I can all apply in an actual entry-level job um, and continue learning in college with other, if I'm going to apply it to a different uh, scope, like if I were to instead want to become a, say I want to become a mechanical engineer, I still need to understand the basics of this to be able to work my job effectively. So it's still useful in those scenarios as well. You can apply the concepts in other spots. Good. The uh, maybe you want to finish this out. What do you uh, what do you see for this um, this area for students in the future? Where where is this program heading? This program, I am hoping that here we will have a cycle to program next year, and both of them will be converted to advanced AP. So currently it is powered by College Board, but it's not AP yet. So next year we're looking forward to the College Board converting that to advanced placement so that our students get, can get the college credit. So that's what we're looking at for Cyber 1 and Cyber 2. So next year or in the future, you should be able to get college credits while you're here. So when you get to college, you can skip over those and keep rolling. All right, thanks for the uh, time visiting. Great, learned a lot today. Way to go, Eagles. Maybe we'll see you down the trail. Maybe some of you will come work for me. Work at Deer Valley Unified. Yeah, we need to protect our data, too. All right, keep up the good work. Cybersecurity is going to be a key part of the growth right here in Phoenix, in large part because of the growth of the TSMC plant right in our district's backyard. What will also be growing in our backyard is more housing and local businesses. Everyone will want a backyard in our community as it builds around the plant. Construction Industries is another major growth area here, and DVSD introduced the Construction Industries CTE course at Barry Goldwater High School this year. For more on this new program and our upcoming CTE High School to Career Expo, I sat down with the CTE specialist, Debbie Kidwell. Well, hey Dr. Finch, it's great to be here with you. Um, my name is Debbie Kidwell. I have been in CTE at the district level for a, my, going into my sixth year now. Taught for 11 years at Barry Goldwater. Uh, late in life teacher, came from industry like a lot of our career and technical education teachers do. Went to ASU and uh, went through the official teacher school and then landed my first um, position at Barry Goldwater teaching marketing and then subsequently um, what was then known as web development. 
Speaking of Barry Goldwater, we have a new program there. Talk a little bit about uh, what's going on at Barry Goldwater. Oh, wow, it is so exciting. We have um, over 160 students, uh, first year in construction technologies. They are having the time of their life. Um, I would tell you honestly, I've never seen so much excitement, both in industry as well as in the district and also in the classroom and lab with the students. Um, very exciting to see students that really want a different type of career pathway and being led by an instructor, uh, William Schooley, Bill Schooley came from uh, teaching math at one of our other high schools, has a great background in um, commercial construction and is really bringing some real world skills to the students there. Tell me a little bit about what a kid's week might look like. Are they standing in a room? Are they reading books? So how do they how do they get this experience? Okay, well first of all, the, it's a non-traditional looking type of classroom. You walk in there and you see hard hats and you've got tables that would typically be used in a, a drafting environment because they do work on blueprints. Um, but they also have just this unbelievable lab that we're really fortunate to have had a lot of uh, partners uh, with us to get that, uh, including the Office of Economic Opportunity, WestMEC, and also NCCER. So all of them stepped in with a lot of funding. We've got great equipment, um, a great environment that includes um, a backyard area that they call where they work outside and they have access to state-of-the-art hand tools and power tools and equipment and supplies that they need. Are they building specific projects or are they learning concepts? So it's the first year of the program. So typically in current technical education, our programs are built out to be two, three, or four years. Right now we're targeting the two-year program because we just started. Um, but in the first year, they get just an overview of a lot of things. Right now they're working on masonry and cement. Um, before these current um, skill concepts that they've been learning, they were learning about blueprints, but the most important thing is they start the year learning about safety, and so they get an OSHA 10 certification, uh, which they're still working on. They'll have, it, they'll have it complete right after we get back from winter break, and then they start working on an NCCER core certification, which is recognized by industry, actually one of the most widely recognized certifications by industry. So is it safe to say like a module approach where they learn a little bit about uh, cement, a little bit about electrical, a little bit about exactly. everything you need in a house? So, so second it, semester they'll learn about electrical and plumbing, they'll learn about some framing, but they're just learning kind of the, if you think of it, kind of like a, a hamburger. Um, you know, they're learning a little bit of the meat, and we're not going to put on the cheese and all the condiments yet. That happens in year two when they really dig deeper into the technical skills. And then in year two, they get into some other things that they don't get into in year one, um, such as they will learn about finishing on the outside of a project. Um, they'll learn about detailed framing of floors. And, and those kinds of technical skills that they don't really get in the first year of the program. Well, let's say we have a really advanced student. Is there any chance for them to, as a senior, to go to an internship? Absolutely. In fact, we the amount of industry uh, interest in this program is like nothing I've ever seen. Um, we've already had uh, DPR Construction in, which is one of the top commercial construction companies, Sunt. Uh, we've had the Masonry Council in. All of these organizations are sending in their teams to do work-based learning with our students, so they're getting hands-on experience right now. There are some very innovative programs out there for students to leave high school and be directly employed in these high-wage, high-demand uh, positions. For example, um, a couple weeks ago we got to go to the Home Building Academy which is a partnership between the home builder community here in Phoenix, and they provide a nine-week program. Students can go in there, they learn basic framing skills, and are put into a direct pipeline where they can be hired. Um, you know, probably they could be hired by August after graduating in May from one of our high schools. Um, so the other things that they can do is a lot of these companies like Sunt and DPR, um, they want to hire them and they'll build the talent themselves. They have people and trainers that do that. And a really exciting story is that our recent um, council that we hold with industry, one of our students who's a senior has actually already uh, committed to a position with one of uh, Deer Valley's 
uh, business partners, which is West Coast of Plumbing. So we're really excited about the students going directly into employment. But we have a lot of students that are younger, too. So we're building this pipeline. We have a lot of ninth and 10th graders that are going to be with us through the course of building this program out. And we look forward to finding out as the state gets um, more sophisticated in how they deal with the apprenticeship program for students that are under 18, how we can put that talent into the pipeline. So if I'm a middle school mom and I want my kid to check it out, um, what can I do to learn a little bit more about maybe some of the cool things that CTE offers? Well, first I want to just tell you that in the middle schools, we uh, the traditional middle schools like Desert Sky Middle School, we have a construction exploratory program. So the students could actually be exploring that in grades 7 and 8. But if they are in eighth grade and they're getting ready to enter high school, there's a couple great ways. First of all, talk to, talk to their counselor at the school. Um, but secondly, we'd love to see them uh, come to our CTE Expo. Tell me a little bit more about that. What am I going to see there? So you're going to see all of our programs. It's a showcase of all 22 of the Deer Valley Unified Satellite Programs, which are funded by WestMEC as well as WestMEC will be there talking about the programs that are available for grades 11 and 12 uh, for students that are uh, pursuing other pathways that we don't have at our five high schools. But all the programs will be there. We have student ambassadors. Uh, we find that those student ambassadors, which we call our purple shirts, that so you can recognize them if you come to see the purple shirts, those students can really engage in a, a, a great conversation with the eighth graders. And then the teachers and instructors are there to talk to the parents about what their students will experience. If I'm a sophomore or junior, can I still get into CT? Absolutely. I don't have to be a freshman? You do not. You do not. You can enter CTE um, anytime. It's recommended that you have a pathway in mind as you enter into high school, but you can certainly go in into grades 10 or 11. And we frequently have seniors that come into um, Westmac programs for the first time um, as they're um, moving into, you know, moving into that more serious time of choosing a career. That CT High School to Career Expo is this Thursday at the Innovation Center next to the district office from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. You've heard from the students and teachers. Now let's hear from someone who's had the construction in his blood. Mike Dammy is a construction manager for Sunt Construction. And he and his company have already played a big part in the construction industry's class at Goldwater. Dammy shares how CTE courses of all kinds can help students get off and running in the chosen field right after high school graduation. Thank you for having me. My name is Michael Dammy. I work for Sun Construction. Been there just about 19 years. Um, Sun's been around for 134 years. Construction company. Um, I was introduced to Sun by my father, who worked there 39 years, and my mother, who worked there 12 years. So that's a family operation, and if it's got both of you in it, uh, all three, a lot of the family members. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's been we've been very blessed to be a part of Sun and being part of the construction industry. Uh, my dad got into it right out of high school as well. Um, he grew up in the valley as well, and and it was just a, it was a good opportunity for me. So did you look, did you pick up the drive from him, or just did he pull you to that environment, and then you got to see it in real time, or how did it happen? Construction has always been a part of our lives. Uh, we've always done things around the house, uh, helping my dad or helping the buddies. And uh, my dad, you know, actually when I graduated high school, I had an urge to get into architecture and drafting and, and took classes. And I realized I was drawing what I actually wanted to build. And I think the, satis uh, the satisfaction of me building the things and being around the crew and the team is what really drew me to construction. And uh, when I got into it, I just fell in love with it. You said you were from the, this zone, the Valley. Talk a little bit about what you've seen up in our zone, in the Deer Valley Unified School District zone. Um, we Obviously, TSMC is here now and bringing many, many companies, and we're seeing an explosion. How does that impact the construction industry, the one you're involved in? So it's, it's, it's weird. The, the, the industry works kind of in cycles. Uh, we, I, was, I was born in the, born in the Valley. Uh, my dad lived here. Um, my my grandfather was a carpenter as well. They moved here from Nebraska following work. Uh, I think right around 92, maybe 93, my dad, the Arizona kind of dried up. And my dad went to San Diego with Sunt, and that's where I was kind of raised. We came back and forth when he worked. But 
Uh, I was actually in San Diego up until 2019, and that market, while it didn't dry up, it it slowed a lot down, and I found myself over here a lot, so we made the move. When you see an, an area like Arizona where the big tech companies, the industrial work, the wastewater treatment centers come, slowly right behind them comes the building. And the, when I say building, the, uh, the, the commercial buildings. So it's, it's just been a very steady market for us. It's been very consistent, which provides a great opportunity for people getting into the industry, but at the same time, consistency for the, for the gentlemen, the men and women that have been in the industry. Talk a little bit about uh, kids, because the, the purpose of this post- podcast is to really introduce uh, our students to really where their future is going around here. Uh, we have a program at Barry Goldwater, just started a construction trades uh, program. I think you've seen it. Talk a little bit about what you saw and how that can help your company in the future. So really happy to be involved in the Barry Goldwater program. I'm actually on the advisory board for them. Uh, went out and toured it a couple times, went and spoke to all the classes. Um, the industry is no secret. There is a lot of retirees or, or upcoming guys, they're, they're, they're getting out. And I think over the last couple, maybe the last decade, we've kind of done ourselves a disservice because we've kind of always seen construction as a, well, if it doesn't work out, you can go there. And I think what we failed to do is just realize that there's actually a great career um, in construction. It doesn't have to be a, if you don't make this. And if you get involved in it early um, or if you get involved in it late, it's it's, it's, a, it's a great career for young kids where you can start just much like college. You can start early on. You do your four-year apprenticeship, get your journeyman card, and you're off to the races. You're providing for your family. Without the debt. Without the debt. Now, that's the big one, without the debt. And you're also learning how to do things around the house and, and, and improve your home. And it's also, I always I tell the, the high school students, like today I was telling them it's it's a lot like sports, you know, we, you can't build a building or you can't build a project by yourself. So you get really immersed in those teams and you get really close to these guys and you, you just, you do some really fun things. A lot of, I must, uh, I know a little bit about myself. I see construction, especially the repair and the maintenance side of it as problem solving, a skill that you need for the rest of your life. So when you sit, when you're in front of these kids at Goldwater, what kind of uh, applications, what kind of stories, what, what are you trying to tell them about the, how valuable this could be in your uh, future? I tell them it's, it's, you know, we, we talk about, you know, parents and how they, they, they push so hard into sports and baseball. They allocate so much time and effort into baseball or, or, or football. And, and I tell them, you know, there's a, statistically, there's a 99% chance that you're probably not going to make the major leagues, unfortunately. What if I was able to tell your parents that there's a hundred percent chance you will make a career in construction, and you know it's, and it's not, it's there's no secret to construction. It's not extremely hard. It's it it can be dangerous if you don't aren't trained and you don't know what you're doing. But if you just get involved and you learn, it becomes relatively, you know, the, it becomes relatively. Not easy, but manageable. And it's such a great career. You And obviously when you're building a house, building a building, uh, there are many different uh, subcontractors that work as well. You just don't have to be a framer. You can be a plumber. You can be, there's all, all kinds of different jobs that are related to putting a building up. Um, and then again, going back to our Goldwater program, I think that's what we're trying to do there. You're yeah. trying to hook them in, right? Trying to help them, because when you say construction, a lot of people just automatically think, you know, some people think uh, ditch digging. Some people think it's just hammering and nails. But to your point, there's so many opportunities, so whether it's, you know, you said electrical, plumbing, mechanical, there's elevator guys, there's there's running heavy equipment. And so at Barry Goldwater, what we're really trying to do and focus on is, is trying to get them a concrete construction curriculum, which is what I do, concrete construction, and kind of develop that, that mold or, or that curriculum that they can build off of. The other thing that Barry Goldwater is doing a really good job is they've partnered up with the NCCER, which is a nationally recognized um, organization. So in the event that they do leave Arizona, they've got that card that says they're a journeyman, and that's applicable anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the nation. So it's it's a really good program, giving them options. You know, I never I never liked doing electrical, but um, 
I know just I know just enough to say like we'll we'll, we'll get grandpa or we'll hire somebody. Um, I love concrete. I love construction. So. And you mentioned too that you have visited with Westmec students. Yeah. That's another great option for kids here. Um, they have many programs over there, including uh, construction. Um, what what kind of HVAC is over there? Uh, many different other programs. Uh, when you talk to kids that are not in construction but at Westmec, what are you telling them? One of the things that I've been really focused on is getting out to the schools that don't have those programs and talking to them, um, speaking to some of the kids at Pinnacle High School and their football team, um, letting them know that I, I just think it's we've we've done a we've done a bad job of getting that option out to the kids and letting them know. And even if you do want to go into college and that's your dream, there's still construction within college as well. Um, so it's just letting them know, giving them an option, just letting them, letting all these kids know that there is options. You, uh, you did mention, have mentioned college a couple of times. You, uh, there is also some parts of uh, construction that you need college for. Are there companies that help pay for that or, or do you go to college first and then get hired by the company, or do you do it hand in hand, or how does it work for for that side of it? I can't speak on all companies, but I, I do know that there are, like for example, Sun Construction, where I work for. You know, um, they have an opportunity not only to come in as a as an apprentice and learn the trade that they're doing at that particular moment, but as you get hired on and you choose, or as you as you grow in your career, as you if you choose, like you know what, I do want to try college and I do want to. You know, Sutton has programs where they pay for your college. They pay, um, we have an employee right now, his name's Eric. Um, so he started it as a labor. And, you know, we call, when we say labor, that's usually the, the first step. Um, he started as that, he got into the apprenticeship program. So that's step number one to be a journeyman carpenter. Through that, through that time frame, he found a passion for survey and layout. And he found a passion for robotics. And, so we got him involved in that, and we, we the company paid for that, and he, he learned that aspect of the trade. And then now he's in a really unique situation where he's like, I really like the office. Um, I want to be a project manager someday. I want to be the, do the finances. So he's son's paying 100% for his college education at night, and he's working on get his, getting his degree in construction management. It's pretty obvious that construction in Arizona in particular is uh, the opportunities are vast. They we are they are crying for employees today, um, and it's it only beginning to ramp up in our zone in particular. Thousands of thousands of families are coming this direction. It's not if, it's when. You, know, you can just drive around and see all of the construction that's going now, and really the part particularly around the factory hasn't even been uh, you know all put together yet. So. It's it, in the next decade. This zone will be one of the most active in the state of Arizona. Yeah, it's it's it's. This is the first wave. So typically, like I was saying earlier, this is when you start noticing the data centers and you start noticing the big factories. You got to remember those things will employ hundreds, if not thousands, of employees. Well, where do they live? So then comes the residential, commercial or the residential framing and the uh, framing of the houses. Well, then you need to start thinking about the buildings and the hotels and the, and all those other aspects that fall right behind it. So um, I always encourage the kids to look around and, and right now you'll see it's only the first wave. This isn't something that's, you're not at the tail end. It's never too late. Um, it's hard because construction is a ever changing environment. And it, and again, it, it comes and goes. Um, and what I mean by that is, is, one year, your particular area could be the hot zone. And then as that gets developed and you run out of room, but to your point, you look around Arizona and it's just like, man, there's a lot of room. And there's a lot of things that are starting right now will open up a tremendous amount of career for people and they need places to live, they need places to drive, they need all those different things. And obviously, as a kid, if I'm a 15-year-old, going to a program like Barry Goldwater helps me get a taste of what um, the different maybe branches are of uh, construction that I might be interested. In. That's the best way to do it versus waiting till you get out of high school. The best part about that, and when they do graduate high school and they finish their 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 program, the other thing that they're doing is they're setting themselves ahead of all the other students or all the other potential new hires because when they're working with a, an accredited program like NCCER, so they're getting their 
their core curriculum uh, courses uh, knocked out. So when we hire them, they're jumping ahead of all those other guys by by essentially a year within their three year apprenticeship program. And then they also find out things that they're interested in, so they don't waste time in a particular area. Right. They can say, "Oh no, I really like framing. I'm, I'm going to go that way, or plumbing, or electrical, or HVAC, or whatever." So that's what the pluses of CTE in the, in the high school perspective. And uh, we are very blessed in Deer Valley. We have a bunch of great programs, yeah. and obviously Westmec provides us even more opportunities for kids. So, um, and you can actually work in uh, Phoenix. You could work uh, near home where that might not right. be the case in North Dakota. You might have to leave right. and come to Phoenix to work. You can actually work here um, right out of high school in your zone and uh, do very well. Right. And on the flip side of that, if your ultimate goal while you're young and before you're married and have a family, if your goal is to get out and see the country, get on with a regional or get on with a regional contractor. Someone that, you know, like right now, um, Sun has a tremendous amount of opportunities in different areas. I'm blessed enough to be, I have a job in Northern California, I have a job in Central California, I have a job in Southern California, I have a job, we have jobs in Oregon, Salt Lake City, you know, so that's a, one of the things that drew me to construction was because before I had a family, I wanted to see everything I could. I just want to thank you for supporting Barry Goldwater's uh, construction program and carrying the construction flag for us yeah. in this community because obviously this is uh, a problem that's only going to get worse if we don't get our kids involved in, and start uh forming the next generation. So uh, thanks again for helping us. No problem. And then one thing I would say, sorry, one thing I would say is, is you know, if someone is listening to this or, or they're thinking like, man, I've never touched a hammer. This is not for me. What, what we always, what I always say to the kids before I leave is, is we only ask that you have three things, effort, attendance, and attitude. Those are three things that you can control as a new hire. Everything else you can get taught. So, you know, you show up on time, or you show up when you're expected, you have a good attitude about what's going on, and then you, you, you put forth the effort, everything else we can build around. Yeah, we do the same thing here. But there's a lot of things we can teach you, but effort and, and being consistency and uh, hard work, um, that, uh, that comes from inside, yes, and you control that. So, um, yeah, we, we send that same message to our students. So thanks again for helping us out and appreciate uh, your line of work and its impact on our neighborhood. Thank you very much. Construction industries and cybersecurity are just two of the 22 career paths available at DVUSD high schools. To learn more about CTE or courses at Westmec, visit dvusd.org slash CTE. Or if you're in a middle school or high school, consult with your parents and guidance counselor on the path or paths that might be right for you. As you go down that path, make sure you have your earbuds in and your phone tuned in to previous episodes of The Soup Scoop on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or at dvusd.org slash soupscoop. I'm Dr. Curtis Finch, and you're all caught up on everything happening at DVUSD with The Soup Scoop Podcast.